What's up tech fans, Kevin here on Tech of Tomorrow. We're bringing you guys coverage on all the biggest holiday game releases this year, and today one of the first ones to land is Batman Arkham Origins. Now some of the fans of the series were a little worried about this one, because it wasn't developed by Rocksteady, the guys that made the first two games, but was instead developed by WB Games Montreal, who did the remake of Arkham City for the Wii U. There are also some people that weren't too happy with the fact that they changed the voice actors a bit, especially that they're not using Kevin Conroy, who voiced Batman in the past two games and the original animated series. So we picked up a copy for ourselves today, and while I haven't had enough time with it to give you guys a proper full review yet, I did want to give those of you that can't wait a good first day impressions of it. So let's sit back and see if this game lives up to one of the best comic book hero games ever made. To begin with, visually this game is really solid during regular gameplay. The city is detailed with a grittier, dirtier feeling than there was in Arkham City, and character movements in combat are smooth. While we plan to bring you guys some more thorough benchmarks in the full review, what I can tell you for now is that running on our system, which includes a GTX 780 and an i7-4770K processor, with all the settings set to their maximums, I've been seeing an average frames per second of about 74. The music also does a fantastic job of capturing that Batman feeling, and is very reminiscent of the animated series. Now right from the start, it's very clear that while this game was not developed by Rocksteady, WB Games Montreal took a lot of care to make sure that it preserved the same feeling we got from Arkham City, while still adding enough new things to make it feel like its own game. Combat is still the same momentum-based style, requiring quick reflexes and awareness of enemy positioning, having players rely not just on combos, but timing countering of enemies, and using special methods for dealing with more threatening opponents, like knife and gun wielders. Now, I've only played the game for about three hours, but I've already encountered new enemy types and noticed some nice new changes to returning mechanics. One of the most obvious new additions is the Enhanced Evidence Scanner, which now not only has you scan objects for information, but even recreates crime scenes and how they happened, giving players things to discover by watching how events unfolded in real time. The cityscape is large in Origins, and definitely retains the same open feeling that Arkham City had, though there are a few odd invisible walls between areas, making it awkward to try and make a straight line trip to your objective at times. This one has also done an excellent job of utilizing Batman's gallery of villains, as several have been introduced in a fairly short amount of time, but always at a nice even pacing, and has given each of them a good bit of spotlight, which was one of the things that made Arkham City a great game. I've had about two boss fights so far, and both have had really solid design. Slightly on the simplistic side gameplay-wise, but this is to be expected when it's at the start of the game, and both have been great from a cinematic point of view. Now for the most part, so far the game has done a really good job of retaining Arkham City's goodness, but there have been a few hiccups along the way in the first couple hours. There have been a few interesting bugs, which can and will hopefully be corrected with some patching, but there's also been some issues with the game's actual design, and not always giving the cleanest directions on the game's control. For instance, sticking you in a hallway that has you pressing space bar like a madman to pull on a cord, forgetting to mention the fact that you hit the crouching button to disengage. It's also a little odd that while the game does take place in the actual Gotham City, the streets are still for the most part completely barren except for the random thugs like it was in Arkham City, though it made sense in Arkham City since it was a prison district. None of these things is bad enough to sour the whole experience, and as long as the game continues to smooth out and provide a solid storyline, I see no reason why this one shouldn't be able to live up to the expectations of its predecessor. Now of course this is only based on three hours of gameplay in the single player mode, Arkham Origins does mark the first game in the series to add a multiplayer component as well, and that's something I really want to sink my teeth into, as well as finish the game before I give you guys my full review later on. Now if what you've seen here is enough to already convince you to want to give the game a try yourself, check out the link in the description for pricing and availability. And while you're down there, if you've been enjoying all this new gaming content on Tech of Tomorrow, please make sure to let us know by destroying that like button. And if you're not a subscriber yet, make sure to become one, because there's a lot of great PC games coming out, including Battlefield 4 in just four more days. Till then, I'm Kevin, you've been watching Tech of Tomorrow, and we'll see you next time.